Hey guys, it's Steph here. I'm back in my cutting garden. This is at the very back of my house. Feels like quite a trek getting back here. I'm very fortunate to live on a big piece of land. I never take it for granted, but at the same time, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to tackle each parts of the yard, clean them up and get them ready to be planted. So I'm pretty happy with where I am in my cutting garden. It's looking pretty good. I have a little bit of cleanup to do, a few weeds, but you should have seen what it looked like last year way better start than last year. So today I am gonna be planting some bare root roses. I get most of my roses from Dave Austin because they're beautiful. I love the way their bushes are a little bit more lush and full and a little bit more graceful and they bloom like crazy. And I love the English style roses. They're just my favorite. So it's kind of interesting. A lot of roses in my neighborhood, um, our winter was really harsh and our summer was really hot and my neighbor's roses, um, all of the stems died. There was no new growth on them everything is coming from the bottom but guess what not my dave austin roses they were just fine so i've been pretty proud of them they're really tough roses in addition to those awesome things that i said about them but today i wanted to tell you why i prefer to plant my roses in a cutting garden i'm not going to have a lot of roses in my flower beds i do do a lot of climbing roses that can wrap around obelisk and on the walls so a few reasons why i decided to just put my roses in a cutting garden First of all, roses don't like a lot of competition and you want to give them some nice space and they're really good for hedging, which is what I do in my cutting garden. So those are the few reasons. And another thing is, although the Dave Austins do look kind of bushy in your flower beds, I don't really love how they look in my flower beds after they're taking a break from blooming, even though they do bloom off and on. And they're just not as full and lush and don't provide the nice texture that I prefer in my flower beds. That's just a personal preference. So this is where I have a few of my roses. They are a little bit on the light green side. I could add a little bit of iron, but they'll be just fine because they're looking really nice and full this year. So I planted this bare root last year and it's putting on a ton of growth. My Alnwick Dave Austin rose is incredible. I transplanted this like four times last year. It went through the ringer. I did it in the hot summer and look at it. It's just doing amazing. There's so many buds that are almost ready to pop out and it's put on so much growth. So right here I have a row designated for roses, that row and then that row. I might add another row. I love roses so much. There's always new ones coming out that I wanna buy. I probably have them more spaced out than I need to. I know I do uh, because they really benefit from a lot of air circulation, keeps down the diseases. And then also um, you're gonna get more blooms because there's not so much competition but I did space them out just a little bit more. I'm gonna put Canterbury Bells in here. Those are some shallow rooted perennials that are great compliments to the roses, great for cutting. And since this is my cutting garden, I just want a little bit of everything. So that's gonna be really pretty. And then over here, I planted a bare root just recently. It's already putting on some growth. This is about two weeks ago. This is the Elizabeth. I'm so excited for this one because it's one of their newer ones. It gets the cutest little button center. It's so pretty so lucky to have gotten this one because I think it sold out pretty fast. Okay, so now that I've hopefully sold you on planting some roses in a cutting garden and making beautiful hedges, not only are they really gonna benefit from that, having all these roses together in a mass is gonna smell so heavenly. So today I'm gonna be planting two bare root roses. They've been soaking in a bucket for nearly four days now. I kind of forgot about them, but they're gonna be just fine. Better to soak them than forget to plant them and let them dry out. I've definitely done that before and it broke my heart that I wasted a Dave Austin bare root rose. Anyway, so let's um, take a look at which ones I'm planting and just a few tips. But I've already done videos on planting bare root roses. I'm just adding a few more to this cutting garden. Okay, so one that I have loved for years now, this is the Cardi Mill. So that's not the one I've loved for years. I got the Boscobel. This is a beautiful rose. It has really big cup shaped flowers, has so many blossoms. It's a prolific bloomer and it's a little bit of a deeper pink. I don't have any of that in my cutting garden. And then I got this Carding Mill. It's a beautiful peachy orange, a little bit on the pink side. So excited to add both of these to my collection of roses. I have noticed that if I soak them for longer than the two hours that they recommend, they definitely seem to start to bud out a little bit more quickly and take root. So, so I would definitely recommend soaking them for at least a day. Now I have to do one of my least favorite things and that is dig a hole for a bare root rose. This is one of the things I hate doing most in the garden. 
it's always a huge hole and just when I think I get it big enough, I need to go a little bit bigger. So let's get started on that. See how long those are? They do slow-mo. Look at that, it just keeps going. <laughs> Okay, I think they're big enough now. Just as terrible as I remember. It's getting to be really windy. I think a storm's coming in, but I have two Ambridge roses right there that I uh, transplanted just recently. They didn't do so well, but this is all new growth, so they're recovering. They're actually not selling this rose anymore. I was gonna put it in container pots, but I decided I wanted to enjoy them out here. And then we've got that Bosco Bell and that Cardi Mill. So with these roses, what you should expect the first year is they do put on quite a bit of growth. Last year we had so much drought stress that it was kind of a unique season. Uh, and you'll get some blooms the first year, but in about three years, you're gonna have a really big mature plant. I hope you guys like this video. Um, I definitely need to go take a shower now, but I am so relieved to finally have those in the ground. And I'm really grateful I don't have any more bare root roses to plant this year. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button if you have any questions. Comment down below. I'm going to add some compost and some rose fertilizer. Where I get my compost, they're completely out of it, so I'm having to wait a little bit. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.